Hi, it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another video edition of Widower Wednesday. I'm Abel Kia, author of the book, Dating a Widower, and today I am going to answer a question that I've never publicly answered before, and that is, what do relationships look like in the next life? Is there marriage in the next life? Uh, how, what happens to widows and widowers who um, are married and their spouse dies and they get married again? What does that kind of relationship look like in the next life? So that's what I'm going to discuss today. Um, and the spark for this was actually a really good email conversation I had with a viewer that was asking these uh, questions. Um, so I'm going to share her question with her permission and my answer to it. And uh, we're going to have an interesting conversation about it today. Uh, but first, before I do that, I know a lot of you are looking at the screen here and you're saying, Abel, what's up with your office? The door is open. It looks like there's a bed in the background. There's uh, like a chest of drawers and stuff. And so just to get that out of the way, um, we are actually getting new flooring in our house. Um, we're having new carpets and some new flooring put in. And as a result, we had to move stuff from, from bedrooms and kind of cram everything into my office. Uh, usually we have lots of room in my office. There's lots of room to work. Um, you know, for me to do these uh, videos and other things. Uh, but I'm kind of really crammed in here today. And actually here, I'll show you around real quick. You can just see like there's beds and chest of drawers and you know, all kinds of stuff floating around in here. And it's just because we're getting new flooring and I still got to record a video despite that. Um, and so it's just kind of really cramped in here, um, but it's okay. Um, by the time I do my next video, it'll be gone. And I look forward to having my office back. So there you go, answer to your questions that people are wondering. Uh, but to the question, of, but to the point in question of this uh, video again, uh, what happens with, what happens in the next life? What what do relationships look like in the next life? What your, you know, how are things gonna look with you and Krista and Julie? So um, here we go. Let me, uh, let me read a portion of this email and then I'll answer that question. Uh, the email goes like this. It says, um, Abel, my widower believes he will see his first wife again in heaven. I struggle with this because I wonder where does this leave me? Sometimes it makes me feel like a temporary thing to fill the time until they meet again. He says he will see me again too. How does this work between the three of us? I don't understand how things work. Do you have any thoughts on this? Thanks for your thoughts in advance. Um, yes, actually I have quite a few thoughts and again, I've never shared them publicly, but I'm breaking that now and I will actually start sharing thoughts about this publicly. So, uh, first of all, yes, I believe you will see everyone that you loved in heaven again or the next life, however you want to say it. I'm going to use the, I might use the, you know, the term heaven or next life. You know, you can phrase it however, how, um, however you want. Uh, so I'll just, whatever, heaven, next life, that's how I'm going to use the term. Uh, but again, your, your terminology may a uh, different, but it's, where do we go after this life? So um, again, I believe we're going to see everyone in heaven again. So it doesn't matter if it's your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, uh, you know, your spouse, everybody, you're going to see them again in heaven, which I personally think is a wonderful thing. Um, I think, you know, there's, you know, if you, you know, I think we've all lost somebody that we were close to. And I just think how nice it would be to see that person again, just to talk to them and hold them and just I don't know, catch up with them. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? And so I am personally glad for that. Um, not only, you know, will I see Krista again, but I will also see my deceased daughter, Hope. Um, you know, for those who know that story, I only, you know, she only lived for nine days. I only got to hold her for a short period of time. Uh, never got to see her grow up, never got to see her personality. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that I will have a chance to actually see her again and get to know her because I really didn't get to have that time in this life. So um, yes, I believe we'll see everyone in heaven again. And I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, I also believe uh, that marriages have the potential to last into the next life. So is there a possibility that Chris and I will be together? Yep. Is there a possibility that Julie and I will be together? Yep. But I want to emphasize the word possibility. Um, I think, first of all, I, I think it's a wonderful thing that if you're with somebody that you love, uh, that you can be with that person again, and not only just and and not just be friends or anything like that, but you can actually be with that person, and continue to have that 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 marriage and have that relationship uh, continue. I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, but if you'll if you'll notice when I talked about it, I said there's the possibility that it can. Uh, continue because I just don't think because you're married in this life that it's guaranteed to happen in the next life. Um, I think that in order to have that relationship, to have like a husband and wife relationship in the next life, it is it is based upon you guys keeping your vows and your covenants to each other. And like, do you actually love each other? I don't think you're going to, I don't think anybody's going to be forced into being with somebody that they don't love in the next life. I don't I don't think that is. I especially, I think, you know, like if you were unfaithful to your spouse, guess what? She might, he or she might be there in the next life, but 
is that person really going to want to be with you? Does that make sense? I think you have, you know, when we, when we marry somebody, you make promises, um, you make vows to that person to whatever, be faithful, be loyal. Uh, you know, you know, there's uh, fidelity, whatever it is, you know, we all have our, these, these kind of vows that you make. And I only believe that your marriage is going to last, um, if you keep those vows, right? So, um, you know, so if you're a good person, and I think you're, you're, you know, you're faithful to your spouse, and you try to be the best possible spouse that you can be when that person is alive, then yeah, there's probably a good chance that both of you are going to be together in the next life as husband and wife. Um, does that extend to people who maybe say cheated on their spouse or were abusive to their spouse, things like that? I personally don't. I don't think that. And so that's why I say there's a possibility that there could be a relationship. Um, in the next life. Like if you want to throw the complication in with me and Krista, you know, I was loyal to her. She was loyal to me, but you know, she killed herself. So where does that leave her in the next life? I have no idea. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, where does that leave Julie? Um, you know, is she going to be married to me or is there going to be some other arrangement? And again, Julie and I do not know. Again, we both believe that marriages can last forever, that they can last in the uh, eternities. Um, if, if Julie was here, I know she'd tell you that she wants her relationship with me to last into the eternities. Um, is Krista going to be part of it? Uh, we just don't know. Um, and the, and I think, and, and by the way, this is something I, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, uh, minimize this, but this is something that Julie really struggled with. And when, when we were dating, um, and actually it almost several times, it kind of caused her to maybe almost end the relationship because she's like, I don't know if I can deal with this. You know, I, if you and Chris are going to be together, I don't know if I want to be part of this. And really this is how. I think it's easy to get focused on things that might happen. And I, you know, like, well, what if this happens? You know, what if you, what if you and Krista are together in the next life? Where does that leave Julie? Or what if, you know, you know, what if all three of you are together? What does that look like? You know, or what if none of you are together? And we, I think it's easy to get focused on things that are, let's just say out of our control, right? It's easy to get focused on events or what ifs and things like that. And the reason Julie and I have kind of come, also say come to peace with this, and the reason Julie was kind of able to kind of move forward um, in a relationship with me, not necessarily knowing her answers, is because we both decided to focus on, instead of focusing on what might happen and focusing on things that we maybe don't have all the answers to, we started, we, we changed our focus into what we could control. So what can we control? Well, we can control how much we love each other. We can control how we treat each other. We can have, you know, we can control uh, that, you know, that where are our thoughts focused? Are we spending our time wondering what's going to happen in the future uh, when we die? Or are we trying to focus on the fact that, you know, we have this wonderful marriage, we have seven wonderful kids together, and are we doing our best to live our lives that you know, the, that we can be together in the next life. Um, I guess I'll point out too, that a lot of the, you know, that we have a book coming out, um, soon. Um, it's really kind of told from Julie's point of view of, of her struggle with a lot of this, not only afterlife questions, but just the fact that I'm a widower and, you know, you know, I, and her, you know, her, you know, her struggle of feeling like number two and setting healthy boundaries and doing things like that. That's kind of the, uh, the uh, focus of the book. Uh, but it, and, and it really gets into her story and how she came to peace with this and some of the answers she received. I'm not, I'm not going to tell it. Like I said, that's her story. Um, I will let that kind of, uh, you know, I'll let that come out with the, with the book. Uh, but I can say that really what helped our marriage wasn't focusing on the, you know, on the next life and what's going to happen. It was focusing on the present and what can and controlling what we can control and that has really has made all the difference in our relationship you know i focus on being the best husband to her she focuses on being the best wife to me and you know when we focus on being great parents to our kids um and we just kind of have faith that everything is going to work out and again we don't have all the answers to that what is exactly it's going to look like but we do know this that you know if i'm not a good husband to julie and if she's not a good wife to me and we're not good parents to our kids and we make stupid bad decisions that could destroy our marriage um it's not going to really matter what things look like in the next life because either we're not going to want to be together or one of us or both of us aren't going to be in heaven anyway so you know, it's, again, it's really, it's, it's, it's with all these things. I know that, you know, it's easy to get caught up in, well, what happens if this happens or this happens? 
you got to focus on what you can you can control what you have control over what can you focus your mental energy on um, you know we have control over our marriage you know we don't have control over world politics or lots of other things like I sit here and constantly obsess and worry about but I do know I have control over how I treat Julie I do have control over um, whether I give her the number one place in my heart or not I do have control over you know my behavior uh, when tough things come up in our marriage how do I handle it am I a jerk about it or can I sit down and and uh, discuss things with her um, and Julie has the same control over her and we just focus on being the best people that we can be to each other and to our kids and to our neighbors and everybody else uh, and we don't spend time wondering and focusing on things that we can't control because again in the end if we're not found worthy to be with each other it's really not going to matter what happens because we're not going to be together anyway maybe that left you with with uh, more questions or not um, if you do have more questions you can type them into the comments below you can also send me an email on my website www.ablkeogh.com there's a contact button there um, and you know if, if if this video has drawn more questions maybe I'll do a second one on this topic but uh, feel free to go ahead and leave your comments and we'll see where it goes from there uh, but also feel free if you want uh, in addition like this video feel free to subscribe so you get notified when more videos come up also if you want to schedule a coaching session you can do that um, on my website as well um, I'm Abel Keo author of the book Dating a Widower and I will see you next Wednesday <laughs>